Welcome. On this video, we will be defining the idea of a truth table. So what's the purpose of a truth table? The truth table, it's a way to organize the different combinations that we can have between true and false statements. Well, what do we mean by true and false statements? Well, let's say that today is Tuesday. And I tell you that tomorrow is Wednesday. Well, this is definitely true. Like if we take a look at our calendar, Wednesday is followed by Tuesday. But what if I tell you then still, let's assume that today is Tuesday. What if I tell you that tomorrow is, I don't know, Saturday. Well, this is definitely false. So by true and false statements, we actually refer to true and false statements within our reality. So if you take a look at the sky and I tell you the sky is purple, well, obviously that's false. And if we look at the sky you, and I tell you the sky is blue, then that is true. But what do we mean by organizing combinations between true and false statements? Well, we got to take a look at the different compound statements that we have seen before. And let's start with conjunction statements. Let's discuss the true table for conjunction statements. Where a conjunction statement is when we put two statements together using the word and. So in my first column, my first row, I'm going to call it my statement P. In the second column, I'm going to call it my statement Q. And in the third column, this is where I'm going to be putting them together. P and Q. This is why it's important to understand the symbols, which we defined in our previous lesson. Now, in the other boxes that are still left here, this is where we're going to be looking at the different combinations. If we have two statements, P and Q, there are four different types of combinations that we can perhaps encounter. It could be that both statements are true. It could also have a situation where both statements are false. We could also have a different combination where the first statement was true and the second statement was false. And we could also have a different combination where the first statement was false and the second statement was true. Now, these are the four different combinations that we can encounter. And this is pretty much just standard. We're always going to be looking at this setup. The first two statements are true. Two statements are false. The first one's true. The second one is false. The first one's false. The first one is true. So how do we fill in the column for the conjunction statement? And again, let's recall this column is when we are putting two statements together using the word and one thing that I do encourage for you to, to do when you're filling in these tables is to have a scenario in your mind. So let's build a scenario. So let's say that P stands for ham. And let's say that Q stands for cheese and now imagine that you go to a sandwich place and you t you tell the clerk eric can i get a ham and cheese sandwich so notice that i'm using the word and so ham and cheese within this row this statement right here this is saying it is true that i put ham in your sandwich and it is also true that I put cheese in your sandwich. So therefore, this and statement, it's saying I did put ham and I did put cheese. So therefore, you got your ham and cheese sandwich. Therefore, the and statement is true. Now, let's take a look at the next row. Within this row, we're saying it is false that I put ham and it is false that I put cheese. Did you got your cheese? And ham sandwich? No, you did not. So therefore, the and statement is going to be false. 
In my next row, I want to say it is true that we put ham in my sandwich. It is false that I put cheese on my sandwich. So therefore, you did not get a ham and cheese sandwich. You only got a ham sandwich. It's not what you asked for. Therefore, the and statement is false. And for the last row, here we're saying it is false that we put ham in my sandwich. It is true that I put cheese on my sandwich. Is it true that you got a ham and cheese sandwich? No, you got just a cheese sandwich. Therefore, the statement is false. One thing to notice within the conjunction statements, a conjunction statement will be true. Only when both statements are true. Which only happen within my first column right here. I'm sorry, my first row. When both statements were true, my conjunction statement was true. Now, let's take a look at the disjunction statements now. Let's look at the disjunction true table statements. So again, my first row, we're going to be placing both statements. So let's say P and let's say Q. And for the same example, let's, let's do the same. Let's say that P stands for ham. And let's say that Q stands for cheese. Now, if we're looking at the disjunction, we want to glue them together using the statement or and if we remember our symbols, then this is going to look like P or Q. And again, it, the truth tables always start the same way. First, I'm going to be listing the different combinations that I can gather. Well, it could be that both statements are true. It could be that both statements are false. It could also be that the first statement was true and the second statement was false. And it could also be that the first statement was false. And the second statement was true. So these are just the different combinations that I can gather. Now, let's think about how we can fill in the OR column. So let's do the same scenario. Let's say you ask for a ham or cheese sandwich. Well, let's understand what the first row will say. The first row, it's an it is true that I'm going to be putting ham. And it is also true that I'm going to be putting cheese. So therefore, are you going to get a ham or cheese sandwich? Yeah, I mean, both of them are there. So we're good. You ask them or so this is where you're giving some kind of an option to it. Now, let's take a look at the next row. The next row, we're saying it is false that we put ham in my sandwich. It is false that we put cheese on my sandwich. So here you did not got ham. You did not got cheese. Is it true that you got a ham or cheese sandwich? Definitely false. We got nothing. You just got bread. Now, if we take a look at the next row, it is true that we put ham in my sandwich. It is false that we put cheese on my sandwich. So notice that here I'm only putting ham on the sandwich. Do you got a ham or cheese sandwich? And in this case, it is true because you're given an option. You're saying ham or cheese. He only put ham. Therefore, you're good. You got what you wanted. You give him an option using the word or. And on my last statement, we're saying it is false that we put ham on my sandwich. And it is true that we put cheese on my sandwich. So at the end of the day, did you got a ham or cheese sandwich? The answer is yes. Now notice when my or, or disjunction column was true. It was true here. It was true here. And it was true here. When did my disjunction column was true? It was true when only one of the statements is true. So during a disjunction true statement, we have a true statement. If at least 
one statement. It's true. So the last kind of truth table that we need to discuss, it is the truth table for a negation. So let's define the negation truth table. So we want to start it off the same way that we have started off the other truth tables. Let's take a look at two different statements, P and Q. But now let's take a look at how we can define the negation for each one of them. So the negation for P and the negation for Q. We always want to start at the same way. Let's list the different combinations that we can gather. So perhaps both statements were true. Perhaps both statements were false. Perhaps the first statement was true and the second one was false. Or perhaps the first one was false and the second statement was true. Now, how are we going to fill in the column for not P? Well, for that, all we got to do is concentrate on what P was. So within this first row, we can see that P was true. So therefore the negation, it must be false. In the second column, my statement for P was false. So therefore the negation, it will be true. Third column, the statement for P was true. So therefore, the negation is false. So we're literally just changing the values for each column at a time. So for P, my first statement was false. So therefore, the negation will be true. And this is the same way that we are going to be defining the column for not Q. So I'm going to take a look at the statements for Q, and I'm going to negate them one at a time. Within this row, the statement was true, so therefore, it must be false. Second row, the statement for Q was false, so therefore, the negation for Q is true. And I think we can gather. So for the third was false, then it's true. The fourth one was true, then it's false. So when it comes to negation, we only want to take a look at one column at a time, and we want to negate one statement at a time so it might there, there has to be some kind of an organization here or else you can just get confused with just looking at a lot of t's and a lot of f but there's a lot of organization within these true tables so let's summarize what we have done today we started by introducing the true table for a conjunction statement that's when we combine two statements using the word and and we said that a conjunction statement it's only true when both of the statements are true. When it comes to a disjunction statement, a disjunction statement is when we join two statements using the word or, and we say that the disjunction statement, it's true if only one of the statements is true. And when it comes to negation, it's changing the meaning of the statement. So if a statement is true, then the negation is false and vice versa. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.